Hey, photo ones. How's everybody doing out there? Um, great job last week with our first e-learning experience and assignment. I really loved to see all of your work and all of your great comments to each other. Um, amazing, amazing job. I couldn't have asked for anything better than what you guys gave me last week. So um, we are going to keep shooting. And this next project is actually the next project we were going to do in class. Um, I've modified it a bit and I'm gonna go over your presentation. So this is like, just like my intro, like we would do in class, um, except you can't see my face, which is totally fine with me. Um, okay, so this project is all about light. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite projects. I love using light in my work. Um, I think light just adds a whole nother dimension to your work and makes your work so much more dramatic um, and just really fun to look at. And there's so much stuff you can do with it. So let's jump right in and learn about light. So photography is totally reliant on light. What would photography be without light? Could it exist at all? Um, no, it couldn't. You know that because from day one in photography, we've been talking about light and how you need light to work the camera and how all parts of the camera, um, you know, affect the light and control the light in some way. We talked about white balance and light and everything has to do with light in photography, right? So there's a million different ways to um, use light um, and different aspects of lighting that you can use in your images. For this project, instead of talking about light in a technical term like we have been, we're gonna start talking about how to use light creatively to enhance your image and make your images more powerful. Existing light or ambient light. This project is actually two parts and I've decided to break it up into two weeks. So this week you guys are focusing only on ambient light. Ambient light is the light that surrounds you all the time, everywhere you are, whether it's from the sun or a lamp or, you know, car headlights or anything like that. Ambient light is just the light that you see around you. Um, it is ever changing and a good photographer knows how to work with the light that's available with them, modify it and make it part of their image. There are different types of light. Although light is ever changing, there are a few basic types of light. Understanding these lighting types and using them to your advantage will greatly enhance your images. The three basic types of light are direct light, indirect light, and diffused light. So we're gonna go over those. First one, direct light. Um, in a direct light photograph, it is an aggressive, strong lighting situation. It is bright and full of contrast. It creates distinctive shadows and highlights. If you can see the source of the light, it is a direct light. So in this photograph, you could see the sun. You could see how it lights up the clouds and the highlights are really, really light and the shadows are really, really dark. So if you have a very strong light source, it's direct light. Indirect light. Uh, the direction of the light is apparent. The source of the light is not visible. Shadows and highlights are a bit softer than the direct light. Um, this is a great light for portraits and creates great catch lights in the eyes. So in indirect light, you can tell where the light's coming from, but you can't exactly see the source of the light. Um, but you can tell it's coming from one direction or another. And it's a little less direct and harsh than the direct light. Diffused light is the light of a heavy overcast, um, dawn or dusk. It is anything that's like if you have a light and there's like a lampshade covering it and makes it softer, um, that's a diffused light. Any significant highlights or no significant highlights and shadows and it's very, very soft. So that's diffused light. So if we have some overcast days, which happens very often here in Erie, um, that would be a good example of diffused light, very soft. Those are the types of light. Um, so you've got the three main types of light and then you have directional lighting. So the direction of the light can have a great effect on your image. Moving your light source or your camera to position the light can change the way your image looks. So for this photograph, 
um, right here, the light is actually facing the camera. I think what the photographer did was there was a light and then in front of the light, there's almost like probably a piece of paper or something diffusing that light, making it softer that has the word free on it. And then in front of that, this is like a little mini figure. Um, so that's how they directed that light right there. So your first direction of light is frontal lighting. And this is typical. This is just the light behind the photographer lighting up the front of the subject. Um, it creates a flat, broad um, lighting situation and reduces textures and shadows. So that's pretty much like si shining a light directly on your subject frontal from the front, frontal lighting. Side light, light from an angle. So more side on one side than the other, creates dramatic mood, enhances textures, subjects have more roundness and depth, um, highlights one area, gives you shadows on the other area. Um, <clears throat> so it creates texture, almost like the skin and the wrinkles in the hands that you're seeing. Backlight is really fun to play with. Lighting is behind the subject. It creates silhouettes or semi-silhouettes like in this picture. Um, if you're creating a silhouette though, you have to make sure that the contact contour, the shape of your subject is actually interesting or else it's just going to be like a black blob, right? So this is a great way to use, um, the sunset, sunrise, sunset makes really fantastic silhouettes. If you have a big window and there's a ton of light coming in the window, almost like when we were photographing in the cafeteria and a lot of you guys put somebody in front of the window and it made them a silhouette. Same sort of thing here. Just pay attention to the shape of your subject. Is it interesting to look at? The golden hour. Sunrise and sunset are called the golden hour. Um, changes quickly. Doesn't last long. If you've ever watched a sunset, you know, you like close your eyes and open it back up and the sun's in a totally different place and everything looks different. It creates a warm golden light, hence the name golden hour. It creates long shadows and great contrast and diffused lighting and beautiful colors. So that's the golden hour. After the golden hour, we actually have something called the blue hour that not too many people actually talk about because a lot of times people will go to watch the sunset and leave as soon as it's gone. But if you stick around for a little bit, there's a very short amount of time after the sun sets that um, everything is blue before it is dark, which is pretty cool. So right after the sun sets, before the sky turns black, everything has a beautiful blue tint and it only lasts a very short amount of time, the blue hour. Boca, we've talked about boca. Um, boca is a lot of fun. Um, it is light that is out of focus. So light that's in the background, usually small specks of light, um, like Christmas lights work fantastic for it. Or you can actually do um, natural bokeh if you have like light reflecting off the water and it's making little dots of light in the background. If you get those to be out of focus um, by either, you know, having a short depth of field um, or actually unfocusing your lens on your camera, um, you can create what's called bokeh light. And that's what you're seeing here in these. Um, if you want to get real creative, you can actually make a filter um, for your camera and it turns these bokeh lights into shapes. I'll put a link in Schoology if you're interested to see how that works. But bokeh is another type of light you can use. Um, speed lights or electronic flashes. Now I know that we're not at school and that you don't have access to my flashes. Like I have these really cool external flashes that you could set up and use and they're really, really fun. But you have a flash on your camera. You have a flash on your iPad. You have, I think you have a flash on your iPad. That's a really good question. Um, but you have the flashes that you can work with and use to your advantage. So um, <clears throat> use with existing light to fill in the shadows. This is what flashes do. Use off camera for great positional light, small and portable light. Um, use for special effects. They can be very dramatic and they can freeze the motion. So in this picture, there's actually two lights. There's a light facing my subject and there's light facing the camera. Um, the light facing the camera is creating this really cool, like light line around him. 
um, and also stopping all those snowflakes. Those are snowflakes, which is pretty cool. But if I only had that one light um, behind the subject, then he would actually be a silhouette. So in order to fill in the light in front of him, there's another flash in front of my subject to fill in the light on him so that he's not just a black silhouette. So those are flashes. Modifying the light. <clears throat> you can use uh, fill cards or reflectors to bounce or direct the light onto things. Um, this is more for your second part of your project than your first part of your project. I don't really want you guys to do this for this part of the project, but this is great for next part. Um, and we have these big reflectors at school that we've worked with, but you could use anything that's reflective, like a, like a white poster board or a piece of aluminum foil. When I was a poor college kid, we used to take cardboard and wrap it in aluminum foil, and that would be our reflector, and we would use those sorts of things. You can use mirror, you could use anything really that's reflective. Exposure and lighting. Over and under exposure can really affect your lighting. Overexposure will enhance the light source. Underexposure will enhance your shadows. So this is the same picture taken at different exposures. Um, and I know that a lot of you don't have a camera that you could shoot manually, but you can, um, if you're taking a picture with your phone or your iPad, you could actually like touch on, almost like you're focusing, touch on your object and the little sunshine will pop up and you can actually move that up and down and it actually changes the exposure a bit for you. So you can play with exposure and your lighting and see how that works. You can also play with editing to enhance the light or the shadows and like add more contrast or add more highlights or whatever you want to do. Okay. Here's some really great examples of people using light in different ways. Um, oh, the top left photograph is a great example of some natural bokeh. I believe that's my picture. I took that. Um, and that was actually the light reflecting off the water like I was talking about. Um, the one on the bottom left is a really great example of a fill flash because if there wasn't a flash in that camera, that um, flower would be just a silhouette. The top right is also flash. Um, which lights up the foreground, and then you also get the background in there. So yeah, there's are some great examples. <clears throat> I'm going to go over your assignment sheet real quick for you. Maybe, there it is. Let's open it up. Okay, so I'm gonna read through this real quick so you know exactly what you are supposed to do for this project, okay? So, light. Photography is totally reliant on light. Without light, you cannot create a photograph. In this assignment, we will pay homage to the one thing that makes photography possible by using it in a creative way. There are two parts to this project. This week, you're going to be working on part one. I'll tell you about part two later. But part one is all about ambient light, using lights that exist in your photographs, meaning that you're not going to manipulate the light in any way. You're just going to use it as you see it. So for this assignment, you should be searching for the light. Look for the light um, in interesting lighting around you. It can be natural light from the sun or not. It doesn't have to be from the sun to be ambient. It's just light that's there, okay? You can walk outside in the middle of the night and maybe there's a cool street lamp that like illuminates something really neat in your front yard and you can play with that and that's still ambient light, okay? You're gonna take four photographs using four of the types of light that I explained to you in your presentation. So each photograph should be a different type of light. And again, those are things like side light, front light, back light, direct light, indirect light, diffused light, bokeh light, flashlight, um, the golden hour, the blue hour. Did I miss anything? I don't think I missed anything. I think that's all. So you wanna use four, you wanna take four photographs with four different types of lighting. You pick, okay? Take them with what you have. Your phone, your iPad, if you have a camera, use a camera, that's great. Edit them with what you have. Last week you guys all explored some really cool apps. Um, you could use those again. You could use just the photo editor on your iPad or your phone. Um, there's some pretty cool computer programs out there. There's one called GIMP that's very close to Photoshop that is free. <laughs> Um, and there's another one, I think it's called Photo P, if I remember correctly. 
um, that I've heard really great things about as well. And I'll put the links to them in Schoology's and you could check them out if you want to, um, if you have a camera um, and if you have a computer. So that's totally up to you. Um, also, if you have a camera, but you're wondering how the heck to get the pictures from um, the camera to the computer if you don't have a card reader. Every camera usually comes with a, um, a cord that plugs straight into the camera and straight into the computer, and you can move your photographs that way. So even if you have one of my cameras, um, look in the bag and see if that cord is there, right? So I also really want to challenge you guys to start thinking about your composition and your creativity and your subject matter a little bit more. A lot of you did that last week, um, but there were quite a few of you who didn't really think so much about composition, right? So um, remember, we're still in photo class. I still want you guys to take interesting photographs. We did that whole, you know, composition, um, how to take better photographs. Um, lesson and I want you to remember that kind of stuff and it doesn't matter what you're shooting with you could take some really cool pictures on your phone so um, it doesn't matter what you're shooting with you could still take really interesting well composed creative photographs okay and I really want you to do that okay when you post them this week you're gonna post to the discussion board by Wednesday and add in your description the type of light each photo is and also tell us what you use to shoot and edit you don't have to write me a book or anything I'm just curious to see what you're shooting with and what you're using to edit um, your photographs okay so just you know add that in there um, and then that's Wednesday so have it posted by Wednesday just like last week and then we are going to comment by Friday to everybody else's. This week I've decided to make your critique worth points as well. So I want you to critique at least 10 other people's posts. So on Thursday and Friday, um, take those two days to critique. And remember to like, you know, scroll down to the bottom and make sure that like people who post later on are still getting comments and critiques on their work, okay? Um, so that's it for this project. Um, have fun with it. I will shoot mine just like I did last week and add them to the discussion board to give you an idea of, you know, what I'm kind of looking for. But you guys did such a fantastic job last, last week. I can't wait to see what you do this week. Um, miss you all terribly. Wish we were at school, but we are not. So let's make the best of uh, what we can. And this week, I want you guys to look for the light. And of course, as always, if you have any questions at all, please, please, please message me, reach out, let me know how you're doing, um, or even if you just want to say hi. Okay. So good luck this week, you guys can't wait to see what you come up with.